Welcome to Mino Music. Hello, Mino. Today we have a special guest, Conan Gray. It's great to have you. Hello. Welcome back to Japan. Thank you very much. Um, I heard that you have lived in Hiroshima for yeah. about a few years. Yeah, a few years. Like when was that? I was like two to five years two old. Two to five. And um, Japanese was my first language, mm. but then I forgot all of it. <laughs> oh, that's sad to hear. So sad. Um, do you have you ma maintained some of like the vocabulary? Can we try to have some conversation in Japanese? Yeah, sure. I'll try. I'll try. Hajimemashite. Watashi no namae wa Mino desu. Hmm. Hmm. Watashi wa Kocha. Kocha. Is that how your mom um, mm. called yes. you? Yes. Oh, I was always Kocha. Kocha. Mm. Can we get to the inevitable question? Mm -hmm. Do you know Detective Conan? Huh? Detective Conan? Oh, oh. Mm, 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 yes? <laughs> have you read the manga or have you seen the anime series? Well, I was actually named after after him. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was named after Conan the Detective. And, and I definitely saw a lot of Conan the Detective growing up. Yeah? Mm. Oh, that, that's very cool to know. Yeah. Um, have you like been like going back and forth between Japan and America? Or you kind of stayed mostly in the United States? I haven't been back to Japan in seven years. Seven years. The last time I came, I was in high school. Mm. Um, and I grew up in Texas, and so we never really were able to like come to Japan that often. Mm. Um, so I think most of the times that I've been here, it's been for like very short amount of time, and um, this is also kind of my first time ever really seeing Tokyo because every time oh, I came, really? I always just went to Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, Hiroshima is a beautiful place, mm. but how's Tokyo? Very different. <laughs> very different. It's like, quite big, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Hiroshima is very calm. Yeah. And that's not Tokyo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, I'm part Japanese as well. Mm. I'm, I'm like, well, we share the same heritage. Mm. I was born in Seattle. Oh, wow. But, uh, I'm kind of a reverse version of you because <laughs> I moved to Japan and stayed most of my life mm. in Chiba, mm. which is like the east, eastern part of Tokyo. Mm. So, um, but you said you grew up in Texas. Did you find lots of um, Asian Americans there? Not really? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, no um, I was one of only like three Asians in my entire school. Entire school. Um, and it was definitely different growing up, I mm. feel like. Um, it was hard because I never really knew where I belonged and I was moving around so much so mm. um, I think that's one of the reasons why I started writing songs because I was lonely and I just uh, wanted to find a way to connect to people I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it definitely gave you some different perspective mm -hmm. in life yeah, I guess. Absolutely. How did the experience of you live in Hiroshima? Did it give you some like different view to American culture? Yeah, I think that um, well, one, I think that the Japanese perspective of America is really interesting, and mm. um, I, I think that growing up in in Texas, but also like having been to Japan and other countries. I mean, I grew up around kids that never even left our hometown, mm, so right. I do think sometimes it's a bit frustrating because. People People would be so small-minded and I'd be like there's there's so much there's a whole world and you can't even see it and um, but I also think that um, it was really special to be able to grow up with a Japanese mother and mm. eat, eat her food and learn about um, my culture through mm -hmm. through her. She's um, Ise. She's like Japanese born. Mm -hmm. Yeah she's she was born here and she moved to um, the states when she was 19. Mm. Oh, okay, so sh I guess she has retained lots of Japanese culture. Yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. So that's really cool that she um, passed passed it on to you. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. So your latest album, Super 8, has just came out and I've been listening to it a lot. My favorite song so far is um, People Watching. Thank you. People watching, we say it, Ningen Kansatsu. Oh! <laughs> In Japanese, it's like people observing, but right. basically it means the same. Mm. Yeah. When I hear your song, your lyrics are really honest. Um, I feel like it's for me, I have lots of Japanese mentality, so you know, we're a little bit shy compared to <laughs> Americans, right? Yeah. So it's a little, for me, like when I see your words, it's it's like, oh, th this guy says everything. <laughs> do you like say everything or like do you hide 
your emotion mm. or how honest is your songs? Well, I think in life I maintain the Japanese mentality. I'm very naturally shy. Like I yeah. don't, you know, I think uh, I grew up very quiet, and I, I feel I still feel that way. Mm. But with the music, I feel like I say everything. I mean, when I started writing songs, I wrote it kind of just. Just for me, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. write them with anyone in mind ever thinking that anyone would ever listen. So they're kind of like my diary entries, and and I, I think it's important to say everything that you really are thinking when you write a song. That way, people can relate to it. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. an important thing. I totally agree because um, when I hear your songs, I kind of feel like, oh, I have this emotion too, but I've, I've never really expressed it before. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think it's really empowering. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, so I was kind of doing my homework and going through your credits and stuff. I was keep coming across to this name called Dan Nigro. Mm -hmm. How do you work with him? Is he like your like a songwriting partner? Um, I mean, I started working with Dan almost five years now that I've been making music with him, and the process really is like I'll just write a song. I'll just be sitting in my room mm. and I'll like write a song, and then I record it on my phone and text it to him, and he tells me whether it's any good or not, and whether we should produce it out and, and kind of I mm -hmm. guess make it into a full song. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild, you know. Like we created this sound uh, over the past five years, and it's been really special to have him kind of throughout this whole process. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. in, in a lot of ways, it's like my dad. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so he's older than you. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, though, so there's this. Um, teamwork in your product, but at the same time, Elton John said um, you rather have a smaller group compared to other artists. Um, what do you consider about that? I've always kind of just written songs alone because I think I feel too shy to write with tons of other people around. Um, it never really was like a, like oh I, I don't believe in having multiple writers. It's never been You're not like against that. it. Either. No, I'm not against yeah. it at all. I think like some of my favorite songs were written by like 15 people, yeah. you know? But I am just not good at it. Like I'm, mm. I only, I write my best songs when I'm sitting alone, like in my room, like with my <laughs> guitar. And so I kind of go by the mentality of like, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. And mm -hmm. um, I, I wrote all of my first album just sitting in my room and I wrote all of Soup Break just sitting in my room. Yeah, well, I feel like it helped to maintain your co cohesive um, message in an album because it feels so intimate. Yeah, um, how do you feel about Elton John complimenting you? <laughs> I mean, he's Elton John, so yeah. it's always an honor to have him say anything mm. about the music and he's just like simply one of the best musicians yeah. and performers of our of all time so mm. um it's super special and yeah uh, he is such an inspiration to so many musicians mm. and songwriters have you met him before never i've never, never met him um but he did facetime me once oh, really? and that was very exciting and mm. ridiculous because i remember just picking up the phone and being like Elton John. Like, oh, it was, was out of nowhere. It was, it was a surprise to me, and yeah. um, he's very kind mm. um, and just so talented and humble and incredible. Do you have any favorite Japanese artists? Um, well, I grew up listening to Kyari Pami Pami. Kyari Pami Pami. And uh, I think I remember like watching all those music videos um, every yeah. time I'd visit, and I met her at Coachella, mm -hmm. um, which was very, I was pretty starstruck, mm -hmm. um, and my mom loves Smuck, oh. <laughs> so we would listen to a lot of that in the car yeah, for sure. Yeah, in the car, mm -hmm. with CDs. Yes, absolutely. Because it's um, sometimes a little hard to get a hold of their music because they're not on subscription yet. Mm, I didn't know that they weren't on interested. Yeah, it, it's a weird, well, I guess I shouldn't say weird on <laughs> this type of, type of interview, but yeah, well, it's cool that you grew up in that kind of music. So you said you grew up in Texas, but um, you also said you have this 
um, shy Japanese mentality as well. Um, so when you come to Japan, do you see the connection to the people? Like, oh, hey, I, I know why those people behave like this. <gasps> Absolutely. Yeah. I think、um, I was just talking to my friend who's here with me right now. She was just like, oh, it makes, everything makes sense now. Why you act the way <laughs>、yeah. you, you act?、Um, and I think something about the combination as well is like, Japanese people are super polite, and,、mm. and southern people, people from the south, are super polite. So、yeah. I just, have to, I just have, to, I have to be polite all the time, or else I feel like I'm offending people.、Um, and I think that that's very built in, into my、yeah. brain. From your mom and dad.、Yeah. Maybe you have some Canadian. Maybe. In you Maybe I have some Canadian.、So、They're very polite. Makes, there. Yeah, yeah.、Right. So, how many shows、um, you're planning to do this time in well, Japan? Here in Japan, right for this trip, only one. Um, it's just a very small show just to kind of say hello to、mm. the people here.、Um, and a few TV performances, which is really exciting. But hopefully, I'll be able to come back sometime soon and、oh, yeah, actually yeah. play a, a real bigger show.、Um, mm -hmm. And that'll be very exciting for, for me and for my grandma, who has been asking me to play a show here for many years. <laughs> right. I guess you already know, but we are notorious for being quiet、mm. at shows. Yes. Are you worried about that? I am worried about that.、Yeah. <laughs> I am really worried. I feel like when I go on stage, I really need people to make noise or else、mm. I get really awkward. So,、yeah. fingers crossed I don't、mm. um, fail. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be alive. Thank you.、Yeah. Do you have any、um, message for fans in Japan? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to say that I'm so grateful that people would want to see me here.、Mm. and.、Um, It's really special for me to come back、uh, into this world after what feels like, I don't know, like all this time kind of transforming and changing, and then to come back and see、mm. everyone. It's just like a very special thing, and so I'm very grateful. Yeah. I saw your、um, picture being surrounded by. Um, fans at the airport. <laughs> Pretty crazy. <laughs> Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, I feel like you have a, quite a fan base in here. I mean, I think that, I think that、uh, it's going to be really interesting to see the Japanese fans because I've never met my Japanese fans ever.、Mm. So it's my first time really even meeting them. So I'm so glad that this is happening. All right, well, it was great to have you. Thank you. Enjoy your trip. Well, I don't want to say trip. Welcome back. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Yeah, enjoy your home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.